Hey. Hey, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. There you are. How are you? How are you? I'm great. How are you? Doing well. That's great. That's great. Another day, another dollar. Yep. Absolutely. Mm. Yes, sir. How is your week going so far? Busy, man. Busy. But it's a good thing. What's happening? Oh, just business growth. Just lots to do around the house. And uh, yeah, just a lot on the calendar. So. Oh, yeah? Yep. So. Oh, wow. So, like, um, what are you planning on doing for this weekend? I'm probably going to get um, <sighs> some stuff done around the house, clean the house up. I've got, I'm looking at my calendar. Okay. <laughs> I forget what days it is. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm planning on getting an um, outline for my ebooks done and, and okay. a couple new courses outlined and hopefully be able to get launched. So, okay. Tell yeah. me about that a little bit. Yeah. So, ebooks are going to be explaining one, we'll explain what pencil leadership is and just dig into being a pencil leader. And then the other is, <clears throat> excuse me, um, it's going to be along the lines of like s- finding your passion, following your purpose, and like seeing your potential kind of thing. Okay. Um, so, and then the courses, <clears throat> I'm working on how to launch podcasts in less than 30 days is mm-hmm. one. Um, and then... A couple other co- courses. I want to get um, update my one-on-one client okay. course dashboard, and then uh, get like uh, my big membership course kind of created. Nice. Yeah. Nice. I'm looking forward to it. I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, I'm excited to get it out there for everybody. Yeah. Do you have a date, or it's gonna be a surprise? Um, the end of the month is what I'm looking at. Hopefully, having it officially already. We'll see. Nice. But, yeah. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. I think today is also going to be a great topic um, that we're going to, you know, discuss on. And I would like us to discuss on the what today. So when we go into the what, we are going into basic steps as to knowing what you need as a business what you need for a business, why you need the business. We've talked about the who, Mm. we've talked about the how, we've talked about the when, and we've talked, and now we're going to talk about the what. Perfect. So um, in the what, there's another fun fact that you probably didn't know or you know, but 73% of consumers love a brand because of a friendly customer service. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, that does not surprise me at all, no. Hmm. I think one of the examples I would think that perfectly fits into this is Chick-fil-A. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I would agree. Another I mean, they, one. They go above and beyond. I mean, yeah. right. They do go over and beyond. Mm-hmm. They, they always tell you my pleasure. Yep. They always give you a reason to come back. They always make a first impression. You know, they're always ready to give you the best because mm. that's what they know how to do best, Yep. which is the best way to go for any corporate business. Because right. if you go, let's say, to Baskin Donuts <laughs> or Bas- yeah. no, Baskin Ro- Robbins, I just, Robbins, can, yeah. I just can put two companies together. <laughs> <laughs> so if you go to Baskin Robbins, or you go to Sonic, or you go to um, Dunkin' Donuts. You know, you don't really get the my pleasure effect like right. you do in Chick Fil A, and it's not anybody's fault. That's just probably their policy or their training. So you gotta understand that if a brand loves customer service, then you are important to them. Yep. And if you are important to them, then you value or you should be valued or you should be considered valued because that way you know that my opinion matters. My vote counts. If you know that it doesn't count, then there's really nothing for you to share because at that point, everything is bygones and bygones. Mm -hmm. But having a brand that causes a friendly customer service 
is one of the best things I can say right now that works for brands and consumers, you know, as a whole. If you go to Costco, you know that you're going to get amazing service. If you go to Delta, you know you're going to get amazing service. You're going, if you go to Apple, you know you're going to get amazing service. So it's not that they're doing it differently from each other. It's just that there's a friendly approach to the business that is not taken away from the business, but, you know, influencing the business simultaneously. Absolutely. It's like Publix. Do you know Publix supermarket? Yes. yes. So where shopping is our, is a pleasure. Yeah. Uh, is their motto. And it's so, it, and I was just told this recently from a friend down there in Florida that the owner, the, um, the person who came up with that, they wanted, they needed bigger aisles because it was so cramped. And so he decided that the aisles need to be as wide as his arms. Wow. Uh, and then with that, they, they do the whole like, uh, helping take groceries to the car and everything and load them up and all that. Like, mm. so shopping is a pleasure. So they have that mantra, that motto that people like will pay a little bit extra for groceries because they get all of that, uh, customer service benefit. Yeah. It's more like target too. Mm. You, know, you get that Starbucks experience. You get that wholesome customer value experience and you know that when you buy something, you are going to come back because you got fed well the first time. Right. Yeah. Um, our quote of the day is when you tell a story about an apparently trivial incident, it exposes the entire fabric of your character mm -hmm. by Stephen Denning. What, what do you think about this? <laughs> yeah, I think, uh, I think our character really has shown a lot when when things go wrong or when things don't go our way and how we respond to them do we do we trash the person do we trash the the maybe the business uh, or do we try to see the positive still and just be like hey there's nothing we can do about it move on um it happened but not drag anyone through mud um and things like that i think our, i think it's a big deal how we respond to things like that um and, and how we respond to people who are negative towards us Mm. So do we follow them? And it's like, I, I've heard multiple times, like when you're in the car and you're, uh, you're driving and someone cuts you off or, or someone's going slow. Like, do you just go off like in your car yelling at them and everything? Like, where are you at in mm -hmm. your character and, and everything? Does that really affect you that much? I know I've had to get a lot better at that because it, it kind of made me realize, Oh wow. Yeah. I mean, what's the point of yelling at that person or they're not going to hear me for one. It just makes me get all upset. And two, like, why would I do that? Because mm. you don't know their story. Maybe they're so focused on something else going on in their day that they're not paying attention to their speed as much or they're not worried about it or they just they forgot to look because they're focused on, I got to get to the, my kid's sick. I got to get to the hospital. You know, you never know. Mm -hmm. You don't know where people yeah, are coming yeah. from. So we've got to take that in consideration. And our character stems, I think, from our heart and, yeah. and the health of our heart. So if we're internally like, in a positive place that's going to extend out exactly that extends out a, a whole lot when you know that fabric is an an ending you know cycle so let's say your fabric is burnt halfway through the yards mm -hmm. it's going to be a question mark you know yeah. even though that whole 10 yards is looking like gold you know that one little inch yep can burn the whole surface so yeah. You, you got to always remember that a brand is a representation. If Chick-fil-A today decides to do something terrible to a customer or consumer, trust me, the shade room is picking that. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody yeah. somewhere is picking that and they're going to make it trend on Twitter and oh, yeah. you'll see it on Instagram and then you'll see it on the news. Because like, people are looking for that negative stuff to, to feed instead of the positive. You know, they, they, they want to talk about the big story because it's such a bad bad story bad look for those people because it, yeah so no i agree we have to watch what we do and say all the time exactly and when you tell somebody a story if you're trying to if you're in that story and you're telling them you're going to tell them differently when you're not in the story so mm. you also have to know how to put yourself out of that story and tell the story as is so that there's no emotion attached when there's a response because whatever you're telling somebody they're processing what you're telling them and when they listen to you, they know that there's a response that they're going to give you without them telling you before you finish. Yep. And if they are telling you something that is probably not what you want to hear, the way you're going to respond to that 
will be based off how you said something the first time. If I say, how are you? And you say, I'm good. And you ask me how I'm doing. And then I just start talking about my day. And then we forget that you were around. <laughs> it's like, right. You know, you'd be like, so why, why am I talking to this guy? I might as well just talk to a tree. You know, like yeah. there is, there's no balance there's no substance so you need to give people your time give people your value there's one thing that our generation lacks the most today and that's the power of listening mm. because we want to listen to to hear but we're not listening to learn or to to adapt or to you know understand okay. you know so when you tell a story please say that story with all of your heart and give that story its entire fabric so mm. that your fabric can be represented as a patch in that story. And then they can see you through that story. If yeah. CNN tells the news today and Al Jazeera tells the news today, those are two different information yeah. systems. <laughs> yeah. You know, but who are you going to watch more? Who are you going to lean more to? Are you going to be on the red side or are you going to be on the orange side? Mm. You need to balance that equation and ask yourself what kind of information am i telling somebody so that they they also get as good content as i do yep agree 100 percent. yeah and with that we want to ask you or tell you um what is a brand um before i also give my definition on here um chris what is what is a brand to you yeah brand is and I like the definition you have up here is it's a representation of your story in a value value form. It's it's who you are. It's your character. It, it encompass, encompasses your purpose and your vision. Um, and so you, you think of like Elon Musk. Yeah, he has Tesla. He has um, SpaceX. He has all that. But like when I hear Elon Musk... I think uh, innovator. I think someone who's trying to use technology to um, make a positive change in the world. Yeah. So that's like his brand. Like, I don't necessarily think of Tesla right away. I mm-hmm. think of his overarching goal. Um, because at the end of the day, if, if he loses all of those businesses, he's still Elon Musk, and he still has that drive to do um, all that, the innovation and, and the helping change the world and um, and so that's kind of what I think of when I think of brand is if you were just you, like if you lose your brick and mortar, if you lose maybe whatever logo you have, uh, pencil leadership, if pencil leadership w- went away, what is Chris Anderson? What would people see from me still? Um, and, and it's still the impact a million lives, no matter what I do in a positive way, um, because whatever I do will will tie into that goal of my personal mission. And so that's my brand, loving others, meeting people where they are uh, and helping them see their potential um, when they can't see it themselves. So I think the brand is, is something that evolves and moves with you, continues with you no matter the stage, no matter what you're doing. Yeah. A brand is definitely a value story mm-hmm. because you see a brand today and you don't need to know what that brand does. They don't have to say, oh, this is our mission statement. This is our business statement. They don't have time to tell you that. They have time to show you that. But the way they show you is how the story develops as they trust you or as you trust them. So you need to always understand that your logo is not your, it's not your ticket to a a, a sale, (laughs) you know? Your logo is like literally a symbol or a representation of who you are without saying who you are. Not even mentioning what the name is, it's just a symbol. But that symbol and another symbol, probably a bootleg symbol, will give somebody a a quick instant reaction when they see that. If you're trying to buy bread and you see Nature Valley, Mm. And then the next meet you see Vapors Alley, you know, something completely absurd, you know, you'd be like, well, I'm going to try this Vapors Alley and see what it's like. (laughs) No, (laughs) you're not going to spend your $4.99. on. you're going to go with the one you trust. You're going to go with the one you know has the value that you want to be paired with. Exactly. You want to be paired with something that 
looks good. People want to dress good because they want to wear people that look good or that, you mm -hmm. know, they know they have good reputation. So right. those are things that you have to do for yourself. And the best way of doing it by yourself is by serving others mm -hmm. and reaching their peak expectation and surpassing it without having to be forceful, you know, without having to be, oh, this is my cake, you know, you must buy it. Yeah. You can't buy a cake if you don't want to buy a cake. Right. So if you want to make a cake, you want to make that cake presentable. You want to make sure the right eggs is in there, the right flour is in there, yep. the right preheat is in there so that when you come out, people want to attract themselves to you naturally because you've put in the time and the effort to make an impression last. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you got to attract, you attract who you are. So if your cake looks good on the outside, but uh, the inside maybe is not cooked all the way or maybe you don't have the right ingredients, so it, it's starting to smell and people get close because they think it looks good to get close. They start smelling the, the garlic you put in or the, the onions. Like they're going to be like, oh, okay, never mind. Right. Like, so it's going to come out. You might attract them externally, but if in inside you're not having the character, your brand's not strong um, with with character and integrity, then people are going to pick up on that eventually. Exactly. And when they do, it'll be too late to come back from that because you only get one impression of the brand. Yep. Yeah, it takes a while to, to rebuild that trust and, and everything. So yeah, for sure. Right. And with branding, there are nine types of brands. Um... I don't know if you guys can guess them, <laughs> <laughs> but there are nine types of brands and we're going to go through them quickly. Um, what would you say you, you, you think, um, and sorry about the, the first, the first thing on the list. Um, what do you think about a disruptive brand? What do you think that is? Disruptive. Ooh. Yeah, disruptive. You know, it's, it's something that, you know, it doesn't fit within the niche very well. Maybe comes and kind of makes some waves. Okay. And like tries to upset the hen house type thing. Mm -hmm. Try to. I'm trying to think of one off the top of my head. Do you have one? Um, Airbnb. Ooh, yeah. I like that. Yeah. yeah. Airbnb yeah. is like a is a company that does things out the norm. It's mm. disruptive. It's it's yep. it's not like we are trying to get a house for sale. Yeah. You know, it's not Zillow. You know, it's like it's like Uber. Correct. They, I mean, they don't own it. They don't own it one taxi. And how many taxi companies are there now? Exactly. So exactly. That's yeah, that's great. Yeah, when you have a disruptive brand, you are doing things out of the norm. You're disrupting the norm, pretty much. But. Yeah your norm is a little different from everybody else's norm yeah. because everybody's selling cake and candy but you're <laughs> selling cake and candy and ingredients <laughs> you know right it's something different i like that right um so a disruptive brand is a brand that challenges the ways of doing things and introduces new concepts by changing the market system substantially so when you think about brands like airbnb virgin mm -hmm. atlantic you think about yeah. Um, Dr. Pepper, you think about Uber, you think about brands that, okay, Dr. Pepper, what, what, what else do you guys got? Doctors, you know, like, but when you see what they show, what they do, when you see what Virgin does, they're not like Qatar Airways or British Airways, you know, they right. have their own standard. They don't even call it an Airways. It's called Atlantic. So it gives you that different vibe that like, oh let me go to hawaii and virgin atlantic instead of going with spirit you know you, yeah. you you gotta have a reason for why your brand is making that much noise no absolutely yeah yeah i like it i like disruptive brands i think it, it helps us grow and it helps us kind of keep on our toes yes yes that's true the second one is a conscious brand what is your example of a conscious brand or what do you think a conscious brand is a conscious, I think they're aware of what's going on. Mm -hmm. I think they want to make an impact. I like that. Rather than themselves. Um, like kind of purpose driven. Like they have a goal and they want to get at, mm -hmm. get at that. Um, 
Yeah. So like big on integrity. Okay. Uh, possibly. That's a good one. I like the I like the word you used, impact. Yeah. It's, it's a it's a brand that impacts a society or an environment um and changes the, the life of sorry, the quality of people's lives. So okay. if people's quality of life is below standard and this brand comes, they are a conscious brand to give you awareness that hey, there's a higher purpose for what we're doing. And we probably have a blue logo that looks really trusting. So you should join us. You know, it's it's a brand that puts you into your conscious membrane so that you can be able to act accordingly. We're not trying to sell you anything. We're just trying to make you better. Or we're trying to give you that PSA that you've probably never seen. Gotcha. No, I like that. Yeah. And I think there are a lot, a lot out there. Um, well, I'm sure there probably are. There's so many people that are trying to make a difference and help people exactly what would be do you have one for that what what one do you um, think is the... i would say like um seventh generation okay is is a good one um soul cycle okay i don't know soul cycle but you guys can google it you yeah. know you know that's awesome though feel free you know it's it's a it's a it's a it's a brand and i think also because it's it sounds like like we don't know all the brands of we can know all the brands for sure you know but yeah. the ones that stand out the ones that actually do what they say we can fall onto them and fall back onto that you know word that they give one that i like that could fall into uh another category possibly but i think is patagonia uh they're kind of inspiration and um trying to help solutions for environmental issues I like Patagonia a lot. What Patagonia is a lot. Patagonia? Yeah. It's like a activewear brand, sustainable activewear brand. So it's like um. It's kind of like a, a almost. I, I compare it like to Columbia. Like Under Armour. Mm, not so much Under Armour, but like they have like jackets like these. But this is Columbia. Okay. Uh, pullovers. Yeah, I, I like Patagon Patagonia a lot. So that would be one that kind of sticks out to me. Okay. Nice. Um, service brand. I, I mean, I think Chick-fil-A. We already talked about it. <laughs> <laughs> that one pops in my head because that's, that's what that is. Yes. That's yes. yes. Service brands are just brands that offer, it's literally they offer service, but their service beats the usual, oh, here's your plate. You know, yeah. they got to design the plate. There has to be a reason why they're consistently giving you variables to stay consistent. Yeah. No, yeah, I agree. That's mm -hmm. perfect. Right. And service brands, they take time to grow, but when they hit, they stick. Like, I don't think Chick-fil-A took a while. I mean, they've been here for years, but right. the way they had re revamped themselves into a brand that you cannot miss, you mm -hmm. know, you now think about wanting more chicken. You know, <laughs> you know exactly what you're going in for. They give it yep. to you, they serve it to you, so that when you get it, you expect the same back, and you always keep coming back for more. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I think that they, the service there, like they have something to offer, and they they do it in a way of of servant leadership almost. Mm -hmm. Exactly, servant leadership is is a great way of. You know, having a service brand as a representative for your business. That's yeah. if you want to go that route. Yep. Um, another route you could go into is an innovative route. Mm. Um, we have all the types. We have PlayStation. <laughs> yeah. We have Amazon. You know, we Microsoft, have um, Apple. Apple. You know, we have all this Tesla. <laughs> Tesla. Right. Like, there's no way you can say, "Oh, that's not innovative." Because right. you've never seen that before. So if it's innovative to you, if it's something that's new, that means that person went out of their way to like probably project five years down the line what this brand could do for everybody. For example, when the iPod Nano came out, you mm. know, the all those little nice yeah. you know, ringtones and everything. Everybody was like, oh, I got an iPod. I, got, I can store 2,500 um, songs. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you connect yeah. with your iTunes. And those big wires, you know, we're always having, it was heavy too. I cannot forget. But yeah. that brand sustained the, the test of time because oh, yeah. they they knew that 
they'll get to a point where people don't want to have CDs and start burning vinyls on their. <laughs> I don't know if you remember, but Microsoft's the same way. I I remember growing up, and uh, it takes me off. Kids don't have to deal with this, but like the floppy disk oh and the God. big, big computer systems and the dial-up internet. I I already I told my wife if we have kids, uh, God willing, they when they have to have an alarm clock. If they have to have an alarm clock, it's going to be the dial-up internet tone. <laughs> I want them to have to deal with hearing that <laughs> sound. Man, kids now they think it's they think when the internet's slow or the data package is slow, they have an issue. Man, go back to dial-up. <laughs> <laughs> you will wait for the whole oh, day. Oh yeah, <laughs> wait, I got get off the phone or get off the computer. I need to make a phone call. <laughs> Yeah, so innovative. It just even in my lifetime, I'm almost thirty. Uh, in, in 2020, I just turned 29, and so wow, things progress like they have. Um, Technology-wise, just really it, to me is really cool. I think it's awesome. Yeah, I think it's awesome too because it's like you have a whole different demeanor about the brand, and then the best thing about innovative brands is that you don't know what to react. You don't yep. know what to expect because it's new to you and it's probably new to them too because they don't know yeah. oh are this guy's gonna like it and they're yeah. not gonna like it some brands have done it before and they succeeded some have done it and have failed so it's right. not that you can't do it it's just how you plan how you strategize how you put yourself in that you know big effort to make a, a difference so yep. the more innovative you are the, the more the scarier <laughs> it's gonna yeah. get but the bigger the reward, the bigger the results. Look at Apple today. You know, iPhone 12 will be coming out soon. So Amazon, look at Amazon. Look at Amazon. They projected Jeff Bezos to be the first trillionaire. Yes, by 2026. <laughs> That's crazy. That's that, I mean, he's he found a service that needed done. So mo more power to him. I think uh, people would go crazy without Amazon. It honestly, if it went away. Right. Some people might just because people probably only shop Amazon now, you know. Yeah, well, oh, they're so used around. to two two day delivery. Going back, man, I, I still again I remember growing up. Things took like seven to ten days just to get through the mail. <laughs> people would people would riot like we're. And it's stuff? probably just a letter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nothing against the postal service. I mean, they do their job the best they can. Absolutely, and they've even got quicker, which is uh, unbelievable. Yeah, exactly. They're becoming more flexible. They're giving you yeah. more options. They want you more to technology, man. It's it's good, but yeah, we could go. We could yeah. We, could we really won't go, go for that hole. <laughs> I don't know. There was a time. I don't know if it was a fake or parody or it was actually a, a new incentive that they were trying to do. But I saw when Amazon. Um, I think I believe it was Amazon because. People were walking into the store. There are no gates. It's just you and your phone, and you're just scanning your code through the QR scanner, and mm -hmm. you're going in, you're picking your groceries from Amazon, and you're checking out yourself yep. with yep. your phone. It's yep. like it's like we just throw up all the candy, and then you guys yeah. go pick what you want and leave. Well, I mean, it's like, uh, I don't know if you, you probably do, Sam's Club. Yes. That's how I do it. I go. I scan stuff with my phone barcode it shows up on my app i already have my card in there i pay the only thing i have to do is show them when i exit and they can scan that and scan one item to verify it so that's it i don't wait in line i don't no transferring money like that's i i honestly think that'll be the way of the future is just, and it's awesome i can go in scan as i pick stuff off the shelf pay walk out exactly so, like you don't have to think about somebody saying oh go to aisle six you know like you you save that time on doing it yourself and then because it's so innovative yeah. you're getting quality service you're yeah. getting you're getting amazing performance you know that's yeah. that's what i believe that brands should do like they could all serve one purpose but they could all serve different purposes at the same time yeah. the next brand is performance brand um performance is it's a big word <laughs> so yeah. performance i would say like like cars we, we can go into cars like mm. you know like let's say tesla is innovative but yeah. bmw is performance okay yeah you know it's not mm. that bmw is not innovative or you know like they they got their stand they know what they brought to the world you know yeah. and at the same time they know that they have quality and when you're buying a car you're buying a car because of its performance so 
Yeah. If BMW gives you the highest performance and Tesla gives you the highest performance, whichever one you pick at the end of the day is based on your preference because it's what you want for yourself. Do you want to be techie or do you just want to be classy? I also, I could even say like something like Under Armour. Mm. Performance as far as like uh, athletic brands go. Because I mean, you think if you have to choose, someone's going to choose Under Armour over a uh, not so well-named brand because they think it's going to help them perform better. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Exactly. You think about performance and you're like, oh, okay, this can do well. Under Armour, I can box better. You know, they always mm-hmm. give you that MMA feel. You want to yeah. like go into the ring when you're about to go into the gym. Yep. You know, that's that impression they've given you because they know that when you wear Under Armour, you're wearing performance and you know you're getting quality service for your money. Yep. Right. And after that is um, luxury and value. Those two go together. Mm, yeah. Um, you know, like, tell me what you think of those two when you think about luxury, you think about value. When I think of that, I think of, I mean, uh, I, I think of like Rolls Royce. Mm. Uh, I think of like private jets, like, like the high class. I think of like all inclusive resorts, like mm-hmm. luxury, like you get a just, be comfortable and um, like pull out all the stop type of thing. Mm. So high end, higher end, obviously. Mm. Yeah, that's what that's why I kind of go to. Yeah, I would say also like British Airways. Mm, yeah, yeah. They value it's a higher quality. It's another quality. Think about you see how we can still see the same product, the same yep. merchandise but a completely different brand setup. Yep. Because disruptive brand like Virgin Atlantic is not luxury brand British Airways. They can still take you where you need to go, but you can still realize that there is a difference in performance and there is a difference in service that affects the conscious mind, you know, that involves an emotion. Yeah. A value brand is a brand like, that just adds value like Walmart. You know, Ikea, you know, they're giving you value because they know that you're coming here to get something of value. Right. Not that the other brands don't have value, but the value system that they carry is high. And that creates an impression for people to believe and know that this is what we want to see. Right. No, I agree. Yeah, I think that's perfect. Yeah. Yeah. And um, style brands, um, they're differentiated in different ways um, between like services and looks and they they do more than what they show. So it's a style, you know, when you're carrying a style, you're thinking about Target, you know, they have a style, you know, they have that nice doggy with the red nose. It's a style, you know, you don't see Walmart with a blue nose. You don't see that because they're focusing on, oh, this is a value we have. This is the value offers we have. We know everybody comes here. Cool. Target, not everybody comes here. But when you come here, you know what to expect. You may right. get something $15 more, $10 more, $30 more. But because we're giving you that value and we're giving your shopping experience a style. Yep. Then oh, yeah. you are definitely, you know, having a different ride than going to Walmart. Yeah. And I think even if you're going to like Men's Warehouse or... Um, somewhere like that like yes style as far as clothing but like also like you walk in and someone's there to kind of hey what are you looking for let's get you hey let's try that um and and they make you feel like the special like like special and so they're like trying to get you to like see how you look in this thing or or whatnot so yeah putting that stuff almost on you exactly putting a style is it's creative it's it's contemporary and um, I also believe that hotels do this as well. They give mm-hmm. you a style. You know, when you walk in, you're like, ooh, I like the way the interior yeah. design is. Yeah. I like their service. I like this room. The shower looks different. Yeah. You know, it's just the little things. You don't have to change the whole building to make a difference. Right. You just have to make a step to make that change. So when one person sees it, they can tell the next person and the next person before yep. you know that you have a train of people coming to you because you have value to offer. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the next one is also um, experience. Hmm. Um, experience. Yeah. Think about 
Yeah, I have one perfect example, but I want to know if oh, okay. Well, I hope it don't steal it. I, the first thing when I saw that is popped in my head, and I don't know why. Maybe it's just because I've been there. Is um, Rainforest Cafes, mm. Hard Rock Cafes, both of those. Like whenever I go somewhere, I always usually see one of those. They're okay. usually always there, but it's like the experience. You go in and like you're enveloped in this rainforest. Like you're mm-hmm. part of it. You the noises, the sounds. Like the light mist and you walk in like in the race horse or like hard rock like you're part of a concert yeah. like that history like it just immerses you mm-hmm. it's the whole experience but you, then you get the food and the service and and so yeah that's what popped in my head first okay what popped in my head first was disney oh yeah that's a good one too no that's probably the i think that might be the the number one mm. so the model after maybe right right they're not selling you anything (laughs) they're not telling you oh here's this three thousand dollar mickey mouse they're not selling you that they're literally saying come on board come with your family come and see what we have here it's literally like going to somebody's house and seeing what they have in there the only difference is that they built that house with with things that everybody loves and they could monetize it because there are different lines of products they could you know utilize that's a perfect one Right. So when you see brands like Disney, you see brands like um, Universal, you know, um, you, you, you go to different places and you're like, oh, this is this is what they offer. You know, mm. this, is, this is really nice. I, I can I can't imagine myself not being here without my kids or without my family. So you come back again because, you know, that first experience was great. Yep. Experience is like going to a circus. It's like going to a fun park. Yeah. It's yep. like going on a roller coaster. You're having an experience. You're not really buying anything. You're not buying the metal. You're not buying the water. You're not buying the roller coaster trip. You're just buying or paying for a service that gives you an experience that becomes priceless in a yeah. photo, in a in a situation. Maybe you throw up when you're on the <laughs> you know on the roller right. coaster, or you were nervous. Your phone yeah. fell out. Emotions. It elicits emotions. I mean, you're exactly. Paying to, you're, you're paying to be happy. The happiest place on earth. So, exactly. Like, that's what you're expecting. I'm. I'm gonna get, be here. I'm gonna be happy. And I'm gonna have joyful. Like it's. Yeah. And it's. Yeah. It's like yeah. magic. It's magical. <laughs> exactly. It is magical. So, <laughs> so, all these brands are selling the same thing. They're selling a product. Mm. They're selling a service, and they're most definitely selling a name. So, you you have to know what name you you have out there for yourself. Like, do you sound like any of these brands we talked about? Are you close to any of them? Are you are you better than any of them? If you have that zeal, then all these brands can stand by themselves. Nobody, none of these brands are really competing directly. It's more of like, hey, this is what we have. This is our color. This is our brand. This is our motto. Yep. This is our mantra. This is what we want to do. And tomorrow, if we're going to do this A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And then the next year, we're going to probably do h-i-j-k-l and then you are probably starting on n because you've already done the groundwork in another country so you have you are doing things differently on different time zones on different platforms but the most important thing that you need to offer which is the consumer is always right (laughs) you can do everything you can do but if the consumer is not right or doesn't feel like you're right or don't feel like they have the right to be right, then you're not really selling anything because you're bouncing back. It's like an email bounce back, <laughs> you know? Right. You, you, you're you trying to send them a message, but they're not getting it because yeah. they feel like this is my four walls. You know, you can't be like that with business. You have to open up your windows, your doors, your gates, You have to be very, very specific on why you want to bring this out. Who are you even doing it for? Like in our last episode, we talked about who you're doing it for, when you're doing these things. Like right now, you can't be having an experience at Coachella because things are happening, you know? So you can't be like, oh, this is the experience we want to give you, but we don't have the people for it. You know, it's it's different. Just think about the all-time classic Netflix show or Netflix movie, Fire Festival, you know? Hmm. I was reading today how, um, I think it's Kylie Jenner, how they're going to, um, they've settled on a deal for about $90,000 in lawsuit fees because of the the promotion that happened, you know, with the thing about a few years ago. So they're selling an experience, but did that experience really come to life? 
Mm-mm. That's the difference. You can literally sell a whole experience. I, I think I, I saw, I don't know where it was on the internet. It's still there. You can Google it if, if you want to. But I saw a story about a guy who literally had no restaurant, no license, no kitchen, <laughs> no staff, but his restaurant became number one on Yelp. Wow. What did he do? <laughs> yeah. he, he literally gave you and sold you the world. And people were coming in. And if you see the look of that restaurant, it looks like a little hut in the middle of a village and uh-huh. with sticks and fire. You know, it's it's so completely different. But the way it was packaged, probably the angles, probably the caption, probably the verbiage, probably the, the ads, whatever he did to tell you times a million people that hey this is the number one restaurant in the world come through yeah and people would spend money on flights to come Jeez. like you know how many suit you can get sued for that like but people are literally taking risks because they know hey let me beat the odds you know so there's no way you can say you don't have something when somebody like that had nothing <laughs> and still became number one yeah yep we all we all have something we can give to the world. We just have to be able to get past the fear of starting it. Exactly. Exactly. There are four reasons for branding. And there are four reasons out of those nine reasons why we need branding. The first mm-hmm. reason is because we need awareness. We can't buy you if we don't know you. We right. can't marry you if we don't know you. <laughs> we can't. Yeah. We can't do anything because you have not given anything anything for us to be aware of or to be familiar with to associate with you, you know? So right. awareness is like the number one thing. Like, how do you be like, oh, how do I get my brand out there? How do I show my brand? Start with your little community. Start with yeah. your family. Start with um, a group survey. Get 20 people from your class. Get 20 people from your Facebook group and find out, hey, do you guys actually like this? Yes, no, yes, no, 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 no. Yes, yes. By the time you get to see if it's 50-50 or not, you can do a second round and just say, okay, let me see if another set of people do it. Before you know it, you have your answers. And those same people are aware of what you've done. They're probably going to forget because there's a brand that is really established that they know of that you're probably trying to compete with. But how they will remember you is what kind of service you give them. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, they have to know you before you can do anything. So, exactly. Sustainability is the next thing. Not many businesses are sustainable. Um, unfortunately, like Pure One now, you know, they're yeah. out of business. Yeah. And it's sad, but yeah. you see that there's a cause, there's an effect, there's a management. Like the company could be saved, but if you didn't think about the contingency plan, if you didn't think about how you can be able to get out of that mess, you will never know what to do with your business because you you were not prepared for it. People are aware of it, but you didn't sustain it. And sustainability is the number one key to success in any business. Yep. No, I agree. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you nailed it on the head. You got to be sustainable or you're not going to be around. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. And the worst thing is to be told by when people knew you once upon a time, you know, think about back in the day when we were growing up, you know, we had FUBU. We had, mm. you know, Reebok. We yep. had, um, what are these amazing brands that we used to have back in the day? Um, damn. Uh, Sears. I Sears, mean, right. Uh, um, I know Kroger's starting to go, I think. Maybe Kroger's not, about to go? No, maybe not Kroger's. I'm thinking of another one. But he shocked for a second. <laughs> no, not Kroger's. Dang it. I can't remember now which one it was. Okay. There's, yeah, there's so many things that just, and there's probably so many that we're just forgetting because it's been so long that's the point you see it's it's not like it's not like apple apple it's not it's not at the back of your head or your mind because you you fell off you know yeah. and it's so sad that in the next 10 years our kids probably will not even know what peer one is or they'll probably google yeah. it and they'll be like oh that was in 2010 you know right. you gotta stay relevant to remain sustainable it's yep. just the way to go and by staying sustainable is by staying aware and knowing the trend. <clears throat> Understand your industry. Go on LinkedIn. Go on Forbes. Read the Business Insider. Go on Apple News. Whatever you have to do, there's enough information for you through Google, too, or Yahoo, or Bing. 
and you can be able to get your best foot out there. And and that also now leads to the third thing, which is competition. You got to have stiff competition. Yeah. People think competition's bad, but I mean, if you don't have competition, you get lazy. You get complacent. I know in sports, like if we were the best team out there, then there's no reason to really try to push harder and, and, and we get lackadaisical. So, but when you have someone who's better than you, when you have someone who's like the same, you don't want to lose to them. So you're going to work your tail off and try to get better, try to figure out solutions. It's like uh, Tesla. It's I'm pretty sure, and I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure he doesn't care if, if another competitor, like another car company comes and buys a Tesla to try to figure out how it works. Mm. Because he knows that that's going to breed more innovation, more technology, more improvements and everything because they could come up with something than he could. I mean, it's all, it's like, you're competing against each other, but you're working together to improve everything and everyone wins almost. Exactly. And the ones that stay with it. Exactly. People stay in the loop because now there are more options, there are more ideas, and there's more money flowing. So that competition yeah. is great. And another thing I realized is some people actually fear competition in business. That's yeah. a, it's a thing because you're like, oh, I have the best product, but I don't want to be beaten by this guy. So... I'll just chill. And yeah. you never know. That company could go bankrupt next week. You know, so you can't base off social media or base off, okay, I have this hot cake. You have to know, can I survive the test of time? Can I pass through this four seasons successfully? Can I sell all my products? Can I get out of stock at some point? Can I do anything that can make me feel like I've achieved a goal. And if you haven't yep. achieved a goal, then I'm sorry for you because you can't get past that point. You know, you can't compete when you're not sustainable. You can't compete when nobody knows you. You can't yep. compete. It, there has to be a reason why you're doing stuff. So don't skip any step thinking that, oh, I have a brand now, I have a logo, I have a million dollars, I can do this. No, you have to know what people want. The more you can serve people better, the yep. more you get more business. And the best, 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 best way of advertising is word of mouth. I don't yeah. think anything beats that. It's true. It's true. I mean, everything. Uh, you're People are going to listen to you when you say, oh, that movie was awesome. Go see that movie. Or do that new restaurant. You got to check it out. It's freaking awesome. Right. People trust what, what you tell them. And so if you build that trust and it comes from you, they're going to do it. They're going to try it out. Or they're going to remember and be like, hey, where should we eat tonight? Oh, remember... Uh, they told us about that restaurant. Let's go try that one. Okay. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that's what it is. Yeah. Word of mouth is huge. Yeah. Once you build a word of mouth system and people know about it, you get referrals, you get people liking you. That's yeah. how Popeye's hit the news. That's how, you know, it's like people still, I don't think there are any long lines at Popeye's now. So think about the competition. Think about yeah. the sustainability. Those long lines were not going to last forever. Chick-fil-A was not bothered. They were not scared. They weren't like, Oh, we're about to lose business because they know they have Chick-fil-A loyal, loyal, loyal yep. supporters. They have people that can say, even if Chick-fil-A goes bankrupt, I'm going with them. You know, <laughs> they, <laughs> they yeah. have this, this soul tie to their brand that they can be able to still become relevant even when they think that nobody else is seeing. So right. yep. competition is a big thing and which also leads to the last point, um, purpose. You yeah. got to have a purpose for your brand. Yeah. Like Absolutely. that purpose is your mission, your vision, your, vi we talked about it, you know, your objectives, you know, what is your mantra? What are you trying to sell out there? What is your social cues? What are the values you're bringing to people? And the purpose of your business needs to be in a sentence. Yeah. It needs to be short. Just like this sentence, <laughs> you yeah. know, you need, you need to send the message effectively and not strain the air because retention is very, very low in Absolutely. today's society. You know, we have, you go on Instagram today, you see a picture three hours ago, next week you forgot about the story, you know, but what's going to keep that story lingering, lingering on is when you can be able to tell the story throughout different mediums at the same time. Yep. Yep. Being able to, yeah, share it through relative sources and make it, make it relative. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, there are 
essentials for a logo. Um, sorry, essentials for brands. And um, the first one is a logo. The second one is a registered business. And the third one is a website or a storefront. Yeah. This is the three things that literally gives you the ticket. <laughs> Yeah, it's just definitely the this, this starting off point. I mean, you I mean, you have to have something visually people can see and connect you with it. Um, so you can put it on things. And yeah, I mean, that's and that goes along with the coloring and everything we talked about registered. I mean, yeah, you need to be legal. You need to be legit. I mean, people are going to uh, otherwise you're just a hobby. Um, exactly. Kind of make a little extra. Um, and then the website storefront, yeah, it just gives you credibility, gives you somewhere people can go uh, and helps increase your, your traffic and uh, – uh, your engagement with people and so mm-hmm. yeah you always have to keep and you have to keep that relevant too because seo and all that is always changing and um yeah exactly. you, you got to stay up to date exactly i was actually thinking about this is a little bit off topic but it's still within the branding topic mm-hmm. yesterday i was looking at my feed on um, my podcast feed yeah and i was trying to figure out which was the most played um episode and mm-hmm. to my surprise I saw that the most <laughs> the most listened episode is one, the shortest episode. Huh. Two, two, it had about five tags in it, like SEO okay. meta tags. Yep. And I also noticed that some of my other episodes didn't have the meta tags because I know what meta tags do for websites and I know what they do for business and branding. Mm-hmm. But I didn't know how important it is also for audio feedback or yeah. RSS feeds. So... Imagine if you tag all your episodes yep. according to the mood. This is happy. This is business. This is lifestyle. Yeah. People somewhere are going to type that and you're, you're going to pop up at some point and you'll be like, oh, I have a thousand plays. How did I get there? You didn't really do much. You just s- s- put yourself in the, the red ocean and mm-hmm. got yourself out into the blue ocean yep. and then you made your own little ocean pond. You know? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, it's huge exactly what do you need for a business this is where we discuss um what we need to start a building a branding business you need logo essentials we just talked about that yep. you need a branding message yeah you need brand integration that is a big one i'm talking about software like infusionsoft zapier hubspot mm. later yep. planoly the list is endless. You can use MailChimp. You can use yeah. anything that you want to integrate your brand with. You need it because people need to know more about you. For you sure. have to create a brand or a tagline or mantra, which is probably three words or or five, you know, depending yeah. on how big it is. But the shorter, the better. And consistency and most definitely honesty. Those are like the, the six pillars um, to support your business in the beginning throughout too. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think those are huge. Those are all great places to start thinking and building, especially if you you just have an idea. So like filling in these, what all, what could that all look like for your business? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So just make sure that when you make a business, when you make a brand, keep in mind that these brands have stories. They have they have a lifeline. They have a lifetime. They have a lifespan. You yeah. have to keep them in the loop because it's like a robot. If you don't feed the robot, the robot's going to f- probably feed on itself and it's just going to die off. You know, so you got to keep giving that same energy and that fuel, that oil, so that it can keep burning and giving you the results that you actually need for your business, which is what you need for your business. Absolutely. Yeah. This has been a great, this has been a great topic. I think, um, I yeah. hope everybody can also enjoy it. And if you've reached this point and you've not been able to get a chance to check out the online course, please go ahead and do so. It's called Business and Branding Pro Tips. Um, the link is in the description. Feel free to reach out to me. Also reach out to Chris. You know, he has a pencil leadership as well. The podcast is really doing well. There's so many theories and suggestions and, and advice. And follow him on Instagram too, you know, at Chris T. Anderson. Is yeah, Chris. T. Yeah, Chris. T. Anderson. Yep. Okay, Chris. T. Anderson. Yeah, and you definitely will get a lot of information about what he does and how he impacts the youth and how he, you know, sets business professionals to the next level because there is information that sounds so simple, but it's so important for the next, you know, the next big step. Yep. 
Awesome. Yeah, I appreciate you having me on. I, I hope we uh, can bring value to people with this. Oh, yeah, most definitely. Most definitely. Thank you so much. And um, I'll definitely see you in the next episode. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Take care. You too.